this pipe runs down into the bottom of the firebox. So you're basically like forcing air into the bottom of the firebox and it'll burn so hot you can make this water 75, 80 degrees when it's minus 40 out. water flowing for them in whatever paddock they're at. So we have, I think about eight, eight water spots out on the ranch here. And we have a float on it, so it's constantly running. And when they drink it down, the float obviously makes it where the water turns back on. If it gets full and they're not drinking a ton, a lot of the times in the winter, they'll just eat the snow. So then it won't overflow. We don't want all that extra ice and stuff. We actually, um, um, with the fire that we have going, when we scoop it out and restoke it, we'll put all the ashes right around the water spot so it's not so slippery for them. When they drink, water spills out and, you know, can get kind of sloppy. So the ash helps with that as well in the winter. So these are our 13 foot diameter tire tanks. We have eight of these around the ranch. They're all plumbed into a high pressure well back at the ranch. So this is the furthest one out. Um, we're well over a mile away from the ranch. So this water comes right from the ranch and we, we trenched it all in with an excavator. My uncle owns an excavating company. So me and him and some other guys spent uh, the good part of a winter digging this all in and trenching it all up to here and, and building these. So. Um, they're on a frost-free hydrant, so the water is eight feet down right here or more, and uh, they've got a flexible valve, and we kind of designed this box, and they've got a concrete base in them, and they hold around 2,000 gallons of water. So right now, this tank was drained down, and then we came up here, turned the water on like a half hour ago, so that way it's filled up. And now uh, we're gonna hook the float up, and uh, we put a little insulation in the metal box here to, uh, kind of help it stay a little bit warmer and not freeze quite as much in the winter and then we put our metal lids on with the heated firebox in them so that way they stay uh, nice and warm all winter even when it's 40 below these things don't freeze over at all we don't have to worry about it so um, here comes the fun part of dipping your hand in ice cold water to hook the float up how about swimming in the ice cold water <laughs> yeah that uh so we were going to go to the National Bison Association conference a couple years ago and we had just moved the herd like this um, just hours before because we were going to be basically be gone for a week. And so I set the tank up, got it going, set the water heater lid on it and then go to put the skid steer away and this was right before dark and so and we're gonna fly out like and we're flying out in like four hours and so I set the lid down go put the skid steer away and as I'm pulling the skid steer into the shop a uh, hydraulic line on it breaks and so the whole skid steer shuts down I didn't even get it pulled in into the shop I couldn't even shut the door and so we're supposed to be gone for a week and so I start uh, messing with the skid steer and then I go out to check the float on the tank and that's what we always do after we set this up. You wanna check on the float. And here the float had been touching the top of the lid so it was the float was overflowing and running water out uh, because the float was set too high. And so we have this 3,000 or 3,500 pound lid on the tank with the float underneath the lid 
and no way to get it off because the skid steer is broken and we're supposed to leave in th three or four hours and we're going to be gone for a week. So the only option was to throw my swimming shorts on and climb in and go underneath the lid and you'd hold, yeah, you'd I'd hold my breath and go in the water and swim underneath the lid in order to get the float off so that then we could shorten the rope and get it so that it wasn't uh, touching the top of the lid and so it took three different times because the water was so darn cold and it was like five degrees out that night it was cold and so it's me and my buddy Devin and uh, we're running we drove the truck out there so I had some heat I'm in my board shorts and I jump in and you know it takes about takes the wind away from you <laughs> and then you gotta take a big deep you know breath and it sucks the wind out of you as you're in this stuff to begin with and then go swim underneath and so they they thought it was funny they got some pictures of me with just my feet hanging out and the shorts out from underneath the lid while I'm trying to like drag myself over to, to pull the float off but my not my arm would get so numb in my hands I didn't have enough it's pretty hard to, to crank these floats on I didn't have enough strength at first to get my hands were so darn numb even for 20 seconds in the water that I couldn't pop the float off so I had to come back out warm up and then go back in again and then finally got it off I get it adjusted right and I thought I had it adjusted right and here the darn thing was still a little bit too long so I had to go back in a third time to uh, adjust the float but uh, long story short is I it took me a while to warm up that night after dealing with that so now we just throw a little insulation in here it really doesn't need this but it's if the fire ever went out or something we just throw this in here just in case because with the the water in here it'll take a, a couple days for this to freeze it'll freeze over an inch or two at night if it's in the 20s but and it would never get to the float or the internals in the tank but it doesn't hurt to have a little extra protection just in case and then the lid goes on This is just our our bridge. Oh, I just plank. yeah. Keep this over here, and then I'll jump in the skid steer and we'll place the lid on it, and we should be good to go. A local buddy of mine that's a welder and fabricator, just up the road from us, we between him and my dad and I we kind of came up with this design took a little bit of uh, time to think about it and got some advice from some other guys in the industry that back in the day had used wood or propane to heat their water tanks and we needed something that would work on these big tanks and something that was portable. Sometimes it's a be real careful setting it down. So it sets right on. It covers about two thirds of the tank. Give her a little, make sure it's sitting in the right spot. And covers enough of the tank to keep some heat in with the volume of the water. Yet it lets a whole herd, you know, we've had six, 700 head drinking out of these and they, there's no problem with having enough surface area. Sometimes it takes a little, little love tap from the skid steer to set down. The tolerances are pretty tight, so that way it basically traps air underneath it, and a one inch layer of air, of warm air, and then the firebox is recessed down in 
and that is what heats the water. So now we gotta get it fired up. I got your uh, lens dirty. You got to start? Yeah, this will get us through. We, the, the firebox is four feet long, so we can actually throw four footers in there. So it's really just a matter of what can you lift. Yeah. And you don't want to get, we've had some pretty big ones and you end up smashing your fingers at times trying to throw them in there. So. <laughs> Yeah, we can light it up. When the fire gets roaring, we've lost a few eyebrows <laughs> when you open this thing up, so. <laughs> All right. So we've got a damper that we built on this that's adjustable, so you can pivot it face it into the wind, face it away from the wind, you can shut these down and then that way you can control how fast it burns. So if you got it choked way down, just barely, it'll sit and smolder for a couple days when it's filled with you know hardwood like red oak or something and that way we don't have to come out and check it all the time but we still like to just in case but uh, you know when you're starting it up you can open it wide out, turn it into the wind just watch the smoke from the stack, turn it right into the wind, and it'll sit like this. You leave it like this for a half hour. And so this, this pipe runs down into the bottom of the firebox. So you're basically like forcing air into the bottom of the firebox. And then through convection, with that taller stack on there, we used to have a shorter stack and it wouldn't draft quite as good. And so we put a taller stack on and now you get draft going and this thing will get roaring and it'll burn so hot you can make this water 75, 80 degrees when it's minus 40 out. And we've actually done that before. We fired it up and come out in the middle of January and we've got some buddies and some friends and we sit in the hot tub in our uh, shorts and swimming suits. So it gives us something to do, kind of the cowboy hot tub out here. Yeah, so you get this thing like, if it's choked, I've had it where you got it way choked down and you get, you know, you fill it at night and you come out the next morning and you have it way choked down so that there's not much oxygen getting to it. And then you come and you open this up and all of a sudden it gets oxygen and it's, and that wood has been in there just smoldering and drying out for 12 or 14 or 16 hours and it'll just explode. So a lot of times it gets so hot that, you know, you open this up and it's just poof. And that's why I say we've lost eyelashes and eyebrows before where it's too hot. And, and so you always got to kind of keep an eye on it and not let it get too much oxygen and, and really roaring or too little. And then it'll uh, do that to you once in a while. So. But the herd will be nice and happy now, so they get uh, warm water. This is the first time we've had to fire this up this year since it's been such a mild winter here, so.